Hello again from Speed Zone. Today I'm going to show you how I built my own transmission fluid cooler for the GTR. First, let me uh, explain the duct that I have on here. What I realized when I had the nose of the car off is that the duct for the oil cooler, if it was flipped over, would probably fit perfect on this side. And it did. So I'm using this duct, which is normally for the other side of the car, to route air into the uh, the oil cooler. Uh, the hardest thing was building the framework for it. Uh, what I did, I got a Mocal uh, oil cooler, uh, 25 row, that fit perfectly in the space behind the duct. I put cardboard on each side of the cooler to protect it. I taped it to this duct to exactly where it was going to be. Then, of course, with the car down by the ground, I put jack stands underneath here and then uh, configured it to be symmetrical in, uh, in measurements from hard points to the other duct. Once I had that done, I started with my first bracket. Uh, all the, the, the uh, mounting points were where the washer fluid reservoir was removed. Uh, there were three of them that held the washer fluid reservoir in there, in, and they worked perfect for mounting points for all the the framework for the oil cooler and for the duct. Okay, so I'm gonna I'll take this off so you can get an idea of how it fits and some of the framework that had to be built. Now on the back side of the duct, I just used uh, heavy duty weather stripping to uh, seal off all the openings around the cooler. So all the airflow coming through the duct is going to go through the cooler. All the fittings used in this operation are 8AN. Uh, obviously the, the fittings on the cooler are 8AN. Uh, up front, two 90 degree swivel fittings were used to attach to the cooler. Uh, again, what I did was start with the mounting of the, the cooler. You need to get two brackets also two oil cooler mounting brackets they're called uh, with those then I was able to attach to the hard points on on the, some of the framework then once I had that installed then I did some framework for the ductwork so it would fit perfectly over the cooler now once was that that once that was done then we moved to the back now with this up front in the nose of the the GTR from the factory it's blocked off. Uh, so that needs to be cut out uh, the same as the side that has the oil cooler so the air can flow into the ductwork. And while I'm raising the car, I'll show you how that was cut out on the back. It wasn't too bad an operation. You do have to be careful when you're cutting through because you don't want to scratch the painted surfaces on the other side of, of the, uh, the duct. So that's the main thing, just be, be real careful. Uh, if you can, maybe put some tape in there to, to keep any accidents from happening. So as I mentioned, all the fittings are 8AN, uh, the hose is number 8, stainless braided. Uh, you'll have to get 22 feet of that uh, to perform the operation. Uh, from the front of the cooler, we go back uh, underneath the CV joint, where I have it uh, zip tied right here. There's plenty of, plenty of room to get through. The best area to mount the, the fluid pump and I put an inline filter is right underneath the uh, the back of the wheel well area. Uh, anybody who owns one of these cars knows that there is not a lot of room to do any kind of work or add any kind of uh, extras, but this one area worked out pretty well. So as you can see, I mounted the pump next to the inner fender well. Let me move around a little bit here. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but I had to build a little frame in back 
uh, to space this out from the fender well because uh, the fender well kind of sucks in at the top and the, and the pump wouldn't fit all the way flush in there. So I built a, a little framework initially to extend this out and probably about an inch is all you need and then mounted the pump, uh, mounted the filter right here. So everything is accessible if you need to get to it, if you need to change anything, it's easily done. Uh, you're going to need a 90 degree input for the, the filter at this end, a straight fitting on the other end. Uh, you're going to need a 45 degree angle coming out of the pump and you're going to need a 90 degree. You can't see it, but I have a 90 degree at the front of the pump. Now, what I did that was a little different than some of the other uh, uh, setups out there is I put the pump on the back side of the cooler. In other words, it draws through the cooler first before it sends the fluid back into the, uh, the fill port in the transmission. I did that because I figured it was better to have the, the coolest fluid going through the pump possible. So that's why I did it. This way the fluid is cooled before it goes through the pump. The filter is coming out of the, uh, the transmission pan sump. So it's getting the hot stuff. Uh, but I figured out probably a good idea to filter it before it goes through the, the oil cooler and before it goes through the pump. So, uh, and I also put some uh, shielding around the, the line that is going back to the transmission to try and keep it as cool as possible. Uh, I fed the lines up near the factory cooler lines that go to the back. That was the best area. Now in back, let me move this out of the way the other way. In back, what I've done is I had to build a little sump on the pan. Uh, and you're probably saying, man, that is a little sump. Well, inside the, this pan, the factory pan, they have some, some baffles, uh, like an X. And it, the way they're built, I figured they'd probably put them in there for a reason, maybe to help oil flow. So I left them in there. Really, the only reason I needed this was so I could put my fitting on it to come straight out. Some of you are probably thinking, well, why didn't you just go straight up through the pan and come out? I could have done that, but by the time you put the fitting a 90 degree elbow, it would have been down uh, below the under tray. I really didn't want to cut a hole in the under tray to do this operation. So I figured this was the way I wanted to go. So I, I built a little sump, a pretty easy operation. Uh, when I was done with the welding, I did coat everything with pour 15 because if there are any even micro cracks, the fluid's going to leak. So a coating of pour 15 is a, just a little insurance to make sure you don't get any leakage. All right, so this, this one is going out to the filter, to the pump, or to, I'm sorry, to the filter, to the cooler, and then back through the pump. And the pump takes it back to the fill port. Again, you know, that uh, an easy place to, uh, uh, to allow the fluid to go back into the transmission. Um, very simple, easy to get to. So that's the way I did it. And, and again, the line is uh, shielded back here to keep it as cool as possible when it's going back to the sump. Now, these two fittings, they are 18 millimeter by 1.5 to 8 JIC adapters. Uh, you can pick them up at any hydraulic store. I mean, a, a hydraulic shop or uh, uh, outfits that cater to hydraulic work and lines and that they will carry these fittings. I think they're about 10 bucks a piece and they come with the washer. They come with the O-ring uh, makes it very easy to install. Well, this, this is just a screw in installation up here. It screws right into the same threads as the factory uh, plug. This I welded around because it didn't really need to come out. So I just welded it to the, to the little sump and that took care of that. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, an easy operation. Uh, I put the, uh, the on-off switch in the glove box cubby. That was an easy area to get to right next to where the, the power outlet is. Um, you know, the, again, there's not a lot of room to put anything in this car. So that was easy to get to, easy to wire. Uh, I also put a little LED light up by the, the shifter. Um, uh, that blinks, I wired it in line with that switch. So when the switch comes on, 
it uh, the little LED light knows that the system is on and blinks so you don't forget and leave the pump on even though the pump is pretty loud and mounted where it's at even though it's you know has little rubber isolators uh, unless you're deaf you will not forget that the pump is on so uh, a pretty simple system the hardest thing was fabricating the the framework for the cooler and for the duct that goes over the cooler um, other than that it was just you know little by little uh, doing the operation it works uh, uh, the the eight an fittings and the eight number eight line pump plenty of fluid a lot of fluid so uh, that is pretty much the operation I don't think I've left anything out as far as fittings and what you need oh here's one last thing on the uh, on the pump itself you're going to need uh, two 8AN to 3 8 uh, straight male connectors. Uh, that They will screw into the pump, and then your regular 8AN fittings will screw onto those. So pretty much it. I think I've covered all the fittings, how many, much you need. So if you want to do it yourself, now you know how, and I guarantee you this will cool the transmission. So thanks for listening. I hope you liked the video. And uh, I'll talk to you again when I do the next project. Thanks.